Welcome to Synergy 2022, Paintings, Weavings and Jewellery by Established and Rising Star First Nations Artists from the Central, Western and Eastern Deserts, Utopia, the APY Lands, the Pilbara, Kimberley and Arnhem Land. 20% of all sales will be donated to Purple House. Purple House is an innovative Indigenous-owned and run health service operating from Alice Springs. Now, with 18 remote clinics and a mobile dialysis unit called the Purple Truck, Purple House provides vitally important service of getting patients back home so that families and culture can remain strong. Many of the families of the artists in this exhibition and some of the artists themselves are in great need of dialysis and all are extremely supportive of the work of Purple House, which provides real and crucial benefit to their communities. The first medium we'll explore is a natural material of ochre. Ochre is ground from chalk-like rocks derived from the earth and is, of course, found all over the world. In Australia, First Nations people have used ochre for tens of thousands of years to paint up their bodies with ceremonial designs as part of many different ceremonies and to record both ancestral stories and secular designs on rock walls and on the inside walls of bark shelters. In today's art, ochre painting can be found in three main regions, the Kimberley of Western Australia, throughout Arnhem Land and through the Tiwi Islands. Here we have examples from the Kimberley by talented younger generation artist Lloyd Quiller, who paints the water holes and underground water sources of his homeland in the Great Sandy Desert in soft whites and browns and a delightful small-scale work by one of the Kimberley's most famous artists, Mabel Jewelley, in which she depicts the tartar or shaky poor lizard stalking flies when they land on rocks, and eventually it catches its prey. Works from Arnhem Land comprise a bark by Yimala Munungur from Yirkala in East Arnhem Land. Famed for their ochre bark paintings, Irkala artists use a brush made from two or three human hairs to meticulously paint cross-hatched designs in grid pattern. The design itself is sacred and here represents the fresh waters of the Japu clan of the Yulnu people, Aboriginal owners, at their homeland, Wandawai, an outstation surrounded by permanent fresh waters about 150 kilometres south of Irkala. Further towards central Arnhem Land, the artists of Gonbalanya near Kakadu have long specialised in ochre works on paper. Here, senior artist Graham Bardery has depicted the rich wildlife found in waterholes, such as the data and catfish and lily pads that float on the surface, while emerging artist Elaine Narraldall's lyrical work features the water lily itself. Central Australia and the Western Desert are home to the first paintings in Western materials, first with the landscape watercolours by Albert Namajira, and from the 1970s, paintings featuring Aboriginal symbols by the artists of Papunya. Now a huge and varied school of painting, the Western Desert ranges across a vast area of the centre of Australia, from Uindamu to the northeast of Alice Springs, right across to the Pilbara in Western Australia. With their reduced coloration and use of symbolic design, two paintings here are reminiscent of the early Papunya works, Pauline Gallagher's Desert Rush Fringe Seed Dreaming and Marianne Raggett's Nungarai's painting that records a ceremony that involves both men and women at her homeland of Umbukara or Dashwood Creek. Marianne is the daughter of one of the most famous Papunya artists, Tim Lura Chapuljari, and her painting reflects a strong iconography that her father and his contemporaries made famous in the 1970s. One of the largest Aboriginal-owned art centres in Australia is Wollagalangu Artists at Yuendamu. Established in the late 1980s, Wollagalang is renowned for its use of brilliant colours. Artists such as Debbie Napaljara Brown, Leah Nampanjimpa Sampson, Louise Nangala Egan, Lynette Nangala Singleton, and Shannon Napananka Williams' colourful works depict ancient and detailed stories of water dreaming. It's no coincidence that blue is the predominant colour in many of these recent works, as, like most of Australia, it's rained heavily in Central Australia in 2022. More than 1,000 kilometres to the west in the Pilbara, the famous artist, the late Nora Wompi's raw, energetic and colourful painterly works often featured her home country surrounding the rock hold of Kunawarachi. 
a highly sacred and important place for Aboriginal people. Fellow Pilbara artist Bugai Waiulta was introduced to painting by Wampi in the late 1990s. Now, in her 80s, Waiulta's works of the vast lands she would travel as a young woman have become renowned for their energy and coloration and are eagerly sought after by collectors worldwide. Since the mid-1990s, Utopia has become a huge and diverse painting region. The most famous of the founding artists was Emily Kame Ungarai, whose colourful and bold imagery catapulted contemporary Aboriginal art onto the world stage. Other early artists include Polly Nyala Mini Puller and Jeannie Mills Puller. We are now seeing the work of the daughters and granddaughters of many of these artists, such as Belinda and Janet Golda Ungarai. Belinda continues her grandmother's style in lush paintings of the bush plum, as well as paintings that detail the many women's ceremonies of the region. Founding artist Jeannie Mills Puller continues her yam dreaming paintings in which she loads the same brush with a mix of cleverly combined colours, and her daughter, Dulcie Long Puller, paints the designs women paint on their bodies for ceremony. Award-winning painter Gloria Pachari's studies of native plant leaves from her country were her enduring subject matter for her entire 25-year painting career. Now her granddaughter Esther Haywood continues the tradition. Renditions of bush medicine leaves also feature in the work of Janet Golda Umurai, Abby Loy Kamari, Bernadine Kamari and Natalie Holmes Puller. Artists of Utopia's neighbouring community, Umbladowicz, such as Rosie Umurai Ross and Savania Kamara Bonnie, paint the flowers of bush medicine plants, as well as the landscape on which the plants and their dreaming stories sit, such as that by Selena Tees Puller. Noted as the last great desert art movement, the art of the AP Wylands of South Australia burst onto the art scene in the late 1990s from painting workshops by artists to record their history at Warburton in Western Australia and moving east as the artists returned to their home communities and encouraged others to paint. APY stands for Ananu, Aboriginal people, and the main language groups of Pitanjara and Yankanjara, so APY. Its wide grass-covered plains and mountain ranges such as the Musgrave and Everard ranges led the 1870s explorer Ernest Giles to describe the country as some of the most beautiful he'd seen in Australia. With now nine Aboriginal-owned community art centres, paintings, ceramics and weavings from the APY land have taken the art world by storm. APY artists are now both highly regarded and award-winning, such as the Archibald Prize's first Indigenous winner, Vincent Namajira. Namajira's home community of Indulkana, 420 kilometres south of Uluru, is also home to Julie Yachicha, whose work Iwancha Sokage we featured as the lead promotional image in this exhibition. Yachicha's painting represents the important watercourse in Indulkana, alongside which she was born. Red is a popular painting colour for many APY artists as it reflects the glowing earth of the region and is also a strong and powerful colour. Many APY paintings such as Priscilla Singer's, Jeannie Reggie and Sandra Goodwin's collaborative and Raylene Wallatina's work are titled simply Nura or country. In Pitanjara the word Nura is a definition for the physical geography of land and country. However, Nura has a more richly embedded meaning as a place to which someone belongs, defining where an individual comes from, family connections, skin groups and language. Three-dimensional works in the exhibition comprise weaving by Champi Desert weavers and those from Numbulwa in the Northern Territory, as well as unique jewellery by contemporary Gumbangia artist Donna Brown. Champi Desert Weavers started in 1995 as a social enterprise of the NPY Women's Council and now represents more than 400 Ananu women across 350,000 square kilometres of the APY and NPY lands of South Australia, Northern Territory and Western Australia. They use native grasses and some Western materials and display endless creativity and inventiveness in their basket making and figurative weavings. At Numbulwa in the Ropa River region of the NT, artists use reclaimed fishing nets to weave imaginative, finely woven baskets in a project which melds art and environmental concerns. Donna Brown from the Numbaka Valley in New South Wales works in a variety of mediums, including painting and jewellery. A workshop leader as well as artist, she has exhibited extensively across Australia for a number of decades. 
Donna is an instrumental leader in a jewellery making project which engages local First Nations artists of the Nambaka Valley in association with the Sydney-based Australian Design Centre and the Indigenous Jewellery Project. Founded in 2013 by Everywhen Gallery's co-director Emily McCulloch-Childs, IJP aims to strengthen and continue existing traditions and facilitate artists to develop a career as exhibiting contemporary jewellers. Here, Donna is exhibiting unique emu feather and silver jewellery that melds the traditional and contemporary.